Let's just make this simple and plain. I grab this, they won't remember his name. He'll be past tense. He'll literally go from ass to memory lane. First, oh! Oh! you forgot about the little nine. That thing be going crazy. And since Charlie bit me, it's one finger on the bait. Y'all might have to play this back, but when you piece it all together, those are the type of lines that created smash. So here you Everyone enjoys watching battles with a competitive edge, however, seeing a battler get completely dominated in a battle is inevitable, especially if they're competing consistently. In UFC, you have fights that can go the distance, and you also have fights that are over in a blink of an eye. And in this instance, battle rap is no different. Welcome to the Speaker and Language Show, and welcome back to another 2010s installment. This time, we're discussing the top 25 bodies of the 2010s. Small disclaimer, the intent is to highlight lopsided victories and how it affected the culture and the individual battlers. It is not meant to talk down or belittle any talented acts. At 25, the opening spot, we have Murder Mook vs. Iron Solomon. SM2 was a night to remember. The Return of the Legends was a groundbreaking theme at the time, and it gave way to many memorable moments, but the main event was the most polarizing thing on the card. While many people would tell you that the main event did not live up to the hype, they cannot fail to mention that Mook dominated in all five rounds. Mook did a lot and said a lot in this battle that were immensely impactful in this outing. And while many people don't consider this to be neither of their best work, there was pure shock value in the final outcome, and no one else could say they beat their opponent five rounds to zero in a modern battle setting. At 24, we have Ored vs. Showoff. Ored was an individual that achieved an honorable slash dishonorable feat in this encounter vs. Showoff. You'll be hard pressed to find a battler that dominated a battle with a choke. Even with the transform malfunctioning in a segment of the battle, he still found a way to dominate Showoff in every word he spit. The murder in the first line recited by Old Red, and his third is the summation of the overall battle. At 23, we have B Magic vs. DNA. B Magic was the MVP in his 2013 outing, battling the likes of Charlie Clips, Tay Rock, and Ilwo. But his best showing that year was the three rounds he delivered against DNA. There was nothing DNA could do to counteract the back to back haymakers that B Magic was producing. The flow, cadences, chain punching, and momentum that Magic had in all three were unstoppable. And while there were many people that don't really talk about this battle as much as they should, this is easily the clearest win that Magic has against any top tier opponent. At 22, you have X Factor versus Rich Dollars. I consider Rich Dollars to be the Spike Dudley of battle rap. While he is very talented, he just so happened to take the craziest bumps out of any battler. He has stood in front of a bunch of amazing performances where he couldn't match his opponent. But out of all his bad losses, X Factor delivered the most damaging one. X Factor was extremely masterful with his punchlines, comedic one-liners, and his infamous style breakdown that was really a nail in the coffin for Rich Dollars' progression. At 21, we have Averb versus Cortez. No matter what sport you play, you always have to prepare for your road games. But Averb in St. Louis is the equivalent of Undertaker in Hell in the Cell. You're just bound to get hurt. While one can commend Cortez for being a road warrior, I would also say he was ill-advised due to Verb being extremely motivated after his Rex battle. Verb was lights out and was floating in all three rounds with all-time quotables, double back like a camel, electric slide, headshots, the whole nine. This was prime Captain Marketable, using his home court advantage in the best fashion possible. At 20, we have Av vs. Arsenal. It says a lot when every battle on Gnome 9 was released on YouTube except for this one. Either the battle is very vault-worthy or very unfavorable for a certain individual. It was indeed the latter as Av wrapped circles around an Arsenal that underestimated how deadly he can be in any setting. Swag and Circle will forever be remembered as one of Av's best moments, and this battle is one of the most notable body bags Av has in his large catalogs of wins. At 19, we have Pat State vs. Arcane. Arcane! That's a hard name. From there, the battle was over. Very few can command the attention and control the crowd like the late great Pat Stay, and this is by far one of the most impactful battles of his career. There was no better person to dethrone Arcane and restore the value of the prestigious King of the Dot Chain. At 18, we have 40 bars versus Tori Doe. One of the things that makes a body bag a body bag is how the loss affects how the battler is perceived in the path of their career. Tori Doe was one of the most popular battlers on Point of the Ring. Too bad she ran into a hungry 40 bars that was making her rise. 40's lyrical cutthroat approach was too much for Tori to handle as she was broken down in every facet. This win not only sat Tori down for some time, but it also helped 40 propel into superstardom and outline herself as the best pin on the platform. 
At 17, we have T-Top versus Snow. A way to ensure that the money is in your hands is by not leaving it in the judge's decision. T-Top at this point had one of the best performances and one of the biggest looks of his career in battle rap. T-Top was lights out with his charisma, delivery, and potent attack. He took the champ versus champ match seriously and showed why he was one of the best to come out of UFF and the best new guy you can bank on in high pressure situations. While Snow proceeded to take a damaging loss on Rookies vs. Reds months later, the T-Top loss is more damaging because that was the height of his exposure and the last true time people would see him as a solid prospect. At 16, we have none other than Briz Rothstein versus Loso. While I always try to distinguish the difficulty level and stakes between one round battles and three round battles, I do have to mention that there's a certain instance where one round bouts can have a mass effect. One of the main critiques that Loso has received and will continue to receive in his career is his horrendous loss to Briz. Briz was overly prepared and treated this match as real red with maximum effort, energy, projection, performance, the whole nine. At 15, we have Briz Rothstein again versus Mr. Wavy. The reason why the Loso performance hit so hard was because Briz demolished Mr. Wavy a couple months prior. This is a prime example of getting what you want, but not necessarily what you need. After months of Wavy rebuilding his image and stock, it took a total of 9 minutes of rap to completely obliterate it and deplete Wavy's momentum entirely. No matter the setting, Briz Rothstein showed he can entertain, engage the audience, and outwrap his opponent. The breakdown of Wavy's career, slogan, and image made for one of the most dominant value performances in the series, one of the most rewatchable body bags you can name. At 14, we have Chilla Jones versus Prep. Prep not only ran into a prime Chilla at the wrong time, but he also underestimated how tactical Chilla can be against his opponent. Prep has taken some lopsided losses in the earlier part of his career, namely Chess and UFF and John John Adon and Rookie's first feds. But the one that really made him return to the drawing board was his encounter against Chilla on a big stage. Every line from Chilla was a blow, and this is one of the best big stage performances that Chilla has had. At 13, we have Soulcon vs. Fox. Soulcon was a true MC and epitomized his authenticity. Regardless of the platform he graced, he gave you moments and went for the kill every outing. While Soulcon was aiming for conceit at the top Suns representative, he took the time to make an example out of another representative in Fox. This was complete domination and almost feels like a fever dream when you watch Soulcon control the crowd with his all white apparel and the party city hat. But nonetheless, this battle was another situation where a battle had put an amazing exclamation point on the already incredible year. And many people consider this battle the peak of Soulcon. At 12, we have Jazz the Rapper versus 40 Bars. The same way that 40 destroyed Tori Doe two years prior, Jazz took it upon herself to face the literal Queen of the Ring on the biggest Queen of the Ring card ever in No Holds Barred. This was a mega match, and one of the many times Jazz the Rapper was counted out and had to show and prove. Jazz the Rapper knew that 40 was one of the most lyrical pins she would face, and she decided to match her bars, but also add a level of entertainment to match. She ended up taking performance of the night, one of the biggest upsets of all time, and one of the most high profile bodies of all time. At 11, we have DNA vs. Ill Will. It's crazy to see where a battler will go when they're motivated and have a point to prove. DNA, who is also known to be on a dog in many battles, was more than amped up in his encounter vs. Ill Will as Smack himself stated that he would lose the battle. Not only did DNA have one of the most memorable moments of all time, but he also gave Ill Will his most notable loss of his career. The PG killer was in full effect and DNA would be forever stamped as a guy you can never count out. And cracking into the top 10, we have Cortez versus Hallahan. The truth can indeed hurt in real life, but in battle rap, it can be scathing if you're going against a person that can angle effectively. Cortez is one of the most polarizing battlers in the culture, as there is discourse of whether he's underrated or underachieving. But one thing that isn't a question is that he has the most impactful third in King of the Dot history and demolished Hallahan in a crazy fashion. While he gets a ton of flack from fans and peers alike, no one has ever denied how great he was in this battle. At 9, we have Misfit vs. Fair Funeral. The reason why facing battlers on their return is so dangerous is because you don't quite know which opponent you're getting until you're in the middle of the battle, and by that time, it's already over. Misfit had one of her all-time performances and beat Fair in the most impactful fashion ever. Misfit didn't hold any punches or show any mercy in her three-round attack. In a time where personals can be hit or miss, it takes the right person to execute a touchy subject. And Misfit was calculated in every approach. At number 8, we have Danger Zone vs. Lattice. Danger Zone was the most improved battler in 2015, but 2015 cannot be talked about without mentioning the irreversible damage Danger placed on Lattice's career. Danger dominated Lattice in every bar and every word. It's very rare you'll see Lattice completely outclassed in the Department of Lyricism, but it's even more rare to see a battler literally throw in a towel because they cannot measure up to what their opponent is displaying. At 7, we have Ill Will vs. Johnny Alcatraz. In battle rap, you either sink or swim, and unfortunately for Johnny, he was forced to face Ill Will and his boat sank really fast. There was nothing Johnny could do. In chess terms, he was in checkmate before he could recognize it. Will completely embarrassed his opponent in his first and only PG outing. The bars, charisma, humor sliders were all the way up to 100. A star was born this day, and when you talk about the best performances in Black Star, Will's name has to be mentioned.
At number six, we have Couture versus Miss Pack. Couture is another person that stamped herself as a great early on, and unfortunately for Miss Pack, that meant she had to take one of the most demoralizing losses in battle rap and be on the bad side of a viral moment. It was indeed a tale of two female battlers. Couture props would become a staple, and she would become a top talent in Queen of the Ring quick, with her relentless attacks, critical angles, and her unbothered persona. On the other side, you have Miss Pack, who could never shake off this loss and would ultimately become a footnote in Couture's battle rap story. At number 5, you have Calico vs. Samantha Hoffa. In order to be the man, you gotta beat the man, and Calico did more than just take the top spot. He snatched it by giving Math Hoffa his worst loss of his career and one of the biggest body bags in SM history. Battle rap is quick. One moment you're an NPC facing young ill, the next you're the top guy of the league, and dominating performances are the quickest way to make a name for yourself. What makes this even more impactful is that Calico's slogan will become a reality as URL would take their platform to the city of Detroit months later, and Math was never quite looked at the same by fans and and battlers. At number four, we have Disaster versus Cannabis. You win this, a phrase synonymous with waving the white flag, admitting defeat, and acknowledging that you're out of your element. Disaster took the time to distinguish himself as one of the best battle rappers in the world and represented King of the Dot in amazing fashion by having his best performance of all time. Cannabis became living proof that just because you can rap, it doesn't mean you can compete in the battle rap ring. At number three, we have John John the Don versus Jack Boy Main. While traditionalists typically judge battles on a round by round basis, there are occasions where one round is enough to be considered a body. Gnome Night was a historical night for many reasons, and the event kicked off one of the biggest moments and best rounds of all time. John John the Don completely made Jack Boy lose his composure and brought the building down in every sense of the word. There aren't many props that would be as impactful as the Black Wealth Chain, and I honestly think that there's very few people that can make the prop work so well. This not only made Jack Boy rebuild for two years, but it also stamped John John as one of the best tacticians in the sport. Sometimes humiliation is the best weapon. At number two, we have Kayshawn versus Aver. There's not much I can say about this battle. This is the best big stage performance of all time, and I mean that wholeheartedly. I don't think anyone could replicate a performance this great, and Kayshawn will probably never top this performance. Aver completely misdiagnosed the situation and underestimated how bad Shine wanted to beat him, and as a result, he got body in almost the worst fashion ever. However, his career didn't take as much as a hit as the person in the number one spot. Before we get to number one, here are a few honorable mentions that barely missed a cut and some highlights of the top 10 spots. I don't even know what I was trying to do, but now this epiphany on my mind too. Do you believe in a parallel universe, nigga? I do. I do. I do. Danny, it's me. I am you. Yeah. Wait, smoke shit. No matter how many rounds you don't have, you still a hoe, Clip. I'm old school. I was raised to box. That's a forklift, flavor of love. This pump can spit on this New York bitch. My skill. Like, like fuck chess, nigga. Your buddy's getting killed. I let it steam for the green, then leave fettuccine over chess. The chef got clumsy with the meal, nigga. <laughs> Too nice for this nigga, yeah. I bumped him only cause it's on sight with this nigga. I'm charged up back to back like that light skinned nigga, but he could be Drake. I'm Quentin Miller. I got him right for this nigga. Oh, 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 Big T fingers after lunch. Do him greasy. Before the shot, A shirt. After the shot, easy. Before the cut, Shumper. After the cut, Beasley. Oh. All the roids and them cocaine, I would hate my health. If I'm the reason my man's dead, I would take myself. Oh. No pause and better pause. I'm dishing it the realest way, cause your actions then are the reason he ain't here today. God. Sit you on that same path, giving ass for the cash. And it's sad, your mom passed. But this here the problem. Y'all hoes don't fear a funeral. Y'all fear a condom. Oh. <laughs> And it's plain to see no Malaysian jet ain't a stage I can't finesse. Zay vs. Danger bet. But if this a battle on Olympus in light of when Grace connect, then why he keep getting invited like Facebook game requests? You ain't even supposed to be fucking with niggas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, because just let him know. He just keep coming with all that bullshit fronting out his mouth, talking about some shit that he knows nothing about. I cock back, wave the steel, and throw some of your cousins in his mouth. She ain't spitting on facts. You can tell by how her face look, but I know the bitch gonna deny it, so I brought the proof to y'all. I'm trying to see y'all her face. Oh my God.
age when you've gotten weak. You could no longer keep up pace with today's top elites, not acapella or on the beat. Just stop blogging, please. If not, at least while you still got a spot to keep. You used to be a role model to all these geeks. Even gangsters looked up to you like when a respected father speaks. See, the problem is the hip hop. You are unique. That's why it also bothers me, because I feel like I'm putting my own dog to sleep. Watch it. Hey, yo. Y'all can hear me, right? You not amused? This the face of a nigga getting his soul lifted. Matter of fact, your chain back, Jack? Nigga, go get it! WX, nigga, let it spray. I ain't even trying to talk to him. I St. Louis the clip. I mean, I hog through him. Leave his chest blue. Tony stalks through him. Hole so big. Fuck around and walk through him. And at number one, we have Charlie Clips versus T-Rex. Earlier, I said in order to be the man, you have to beat the man. Well, I will also add, in order to become the greatest, you have to beat the greatest people in the sport. And in my eyes, Charlie Clips beat Rex in a way that completely changed how both individuals were viewed from then on. Charlie Clips in that moment was the GOAT, with the emphatic win over T-Rex, and many consider this to be the end of Rex being in his prime. When you talk about showing separation, embarrassing your opponent, and making the status of your opponent plummet, this battle is the true But with nice talent, when Head Ice Man knocked you the fuck out, I was thinking to myself, like, ice wildin', but I heard you was outside like was poppin', my nigga. You know me, I like violence. You got knocked out and woke up with ALS from that ice challenge. 